Amen. Amen. Thank you for being here. Hallelujah. I really wish I could toss the mic right now because I'm full. I'm trying to move, but I'm full. So y'all pray for me. Y'all pray for me. Pray for me. Pray for me. If you would open your Bibles to Luke chapter 10. Yeah, yeah, Luke chapter 10. Praise the Lord. And it, it, it's amazing. I should have known we were going to have one of these type services. Came in, the TV wasn't working. <laughs> Came in, the air conditioner was kind of acting funny. You know, it's crazy storm trying to keep everybody from assembling. I had messages from everywhere. I'm not going to make it. The storm is bad. Blase, blase. You know, but I thank God for social media. I pray that you're able to watch on tonight because the same anointing that's here, I pray that it falls on you in your living room. It falls on you in your bedroom. Hallelujah. I believe God. I believe God. Luke 10 and 38. If you don't have your Bibles, if you can see that screen over there, check that screen out. Luke 10 and 38. I'm reading from New King James Version. Amen. I, I'm just so excited to see you all on tonight. Thank y'all so much. Amen. I, I'm excited. Hallelujah. Before we move, before we read, can we thank God for this band? Yeah, yeah. Hallelujah. We're some blessed people around here at Restoration and at all nations. We're some blessed folk, some anointed musicians. Amen. And this ain't even all of them. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Amen. And I speak that over your life. This ain't it for you either. There's some greater things in store. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Luke chapter 10, verse 38, New King James Version. If you have it, say amen. If you don't, just look over here. We're going to move. It said, now it happened as they went that he entered a certain village. And a certain woman named Martha welcomed him into her house. And she had a sister called Mary who also sat at Jesus' feet and heard his word. But Martha was distracted with much serving. And she approached him saying and said, Lord, do you not care that my sister has left me to serve alone? Therefore, tell her to help me. Two more verses. And Jesus answered and said to her, Martha, Martha, you are worried and troubled about many things. But one thing is needed. And Mary has chosen that good part, which will not be taken away from her. Hallelujah. The word of God for the people of God. Amen. Listen, to tonight's sermon topic is real simple, the good part. <laughs> the, the, the good part. Hallelujah. The, the good part. Amen. Now, generally speaking, the Jews of Jesus' day, when Jesus was walking the earth, had a dim view, a very dim view of women. Jewish women in the time of Jesus were not allowed to get an education. As a matter of fact, they were only good in the eyes of men for making babies and keeping house. They were largely excluded from the worship of God. As a matter of fact, as sad as it sounds, they were regarded just a little bit higher than livestock. The cow was an oxen and, and, and that, that, that they were regarded just a little bit higher than that. I'm getting an echo right here, sir, if you can help me out. A, a woman had no voice in her marriage. Okay? As a matter of fact, her father decided whom she married. He decided when she married. He also decided why she married. Hallelujah. Y'all listen to me. It's okay. It's okay. I'm, I just got I'm amen in myself. Amen. Watch this. A woman could not even divorce her husband under any condition. Did y'all hear what I said? I don't care what he did. She couldn't divorce. Only a man could initiate a divorce. And, and, and Jewish males every day, watch this, they pray the prayer of thanksgiving. And the prayer ended like this. This is how it ended. It said, praise God I'm not a Gentile. Praise God that I'm not an ignorant person. But then praise God that I'm not a woman. 
That was a Jewish man's prayer. Hallelujah. That was the fair of women. Watch this before Christ. But then Jesus came. And he lifted womanhood. He lifted cultural kinds and, and clutches and grass that kept people out of the worship of God. Because a woman cannot even be seen talking publicly to a man. Because it was a disgrace for a woman to be in public with her head uncovered. And, and, and then if she was talking to a man, watch this, either something was wrong with her, she was a prostitute, or she was looked at as some shady kind of woman because it was a shame for a woman to even be in public talking to a man. But, 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 but then Jesus came. Jesus came, and when he came, I'm going to hasten on, he, he spent some time with some of his esteemed friends, Martha, Mary, and their brother Lazarus. And every time Jesus was in that region, every time he was in that neighborhood, he stopped by their house. And I believe Martha was perhaps the owner because her name appears first in the calling of Martha, Mary, and Lazarus. And her brother and sister perhaps lived with her, and Martha was the oldest, I'm sure, because her name was called first. And so Jesus goes to that house, I'm, I'm moving, where Martha, she has a type A personality. And, and Martha being the oldest, watch this, she tried to ruin everything. That's the way older siblings are. Amen. Try to run everything. Try to tell everybody what to do. I mean, they're sometimes bossy and they think they're in charge. They, they try to be the mama and the daddy. They make sure everybody knows that they're in charge. I wish I had some older brothers and sisters in here that would put an amen in right there. And here's Martha running the show again. And Jesus is at her house. And Mary, at this point, Mary has broken two social, uh, cultural, and spiritual taboos. Because in every public place, even in houses during Jesus' day, watch this, there was a space for the men, space where only men could enter, the original man cave. Yeah, yeah. And Mary has crossed the line spiritually and culturally and even socially because she's in a space that belongs to men. And she's in a posture that belongs to a disciple. We might preach after a while. Y'all stay with me. Stay with me. She's Mary seated at the feet of Jesus, sitting cross-legged like the disciples in Jesus' face, at his feet, in a space reserved for men. Now, now, bro, Roger, M Martha sees that. And Martha takes it as long as she can. I mean, she in the kitchen preparing a meal because the kitchen, men didn't even go in the kitchen in Jesus' day. Okay? That, that, that was a woman's domain. It was a woman's responsibility to take care of the house and prepare the meal. And Martha is in the kitchen, but watch this. Mary is still sitting over there in that space reserved for men. <clears throat> and Martha sees it out the corner of her eye, but she keeps on preparing in the kitchen. And pretty soon, Martha gets mad. Her temper starts to rise and She's getting a little bit noisier now. Now she's slinging pots. And she's slamming cabinets. And because she wants to get at Mary, but Mary is in space reserved for men seated at the feet of Jesus. <clears throat> now Martha is getting concerned <clears throat> because Mary by now ought to have sense enough to get up from there and come where I am in the space for women. I went up one key too high. Y'all pray for me. <clears throat> so now Martha is fuming. She's so mad, smoke coming out her nostrils. She throws the dish towel down and goes into space for men. She invades the men's space and said, Lord, don't you see that gal sitting over there? Tell her to get up and come help me. Watch this, watch this. Now, this story is usually interpreted as an example of the tension that exists between those who are given to outward service against those who are given to inward worship. 
There's a strain, there's a tension, it seems, in the text between outward service and inward worship. That's usually how this passage is preached. That's usually how this passage is taught, that Martha is one personality and Mary is another personality, and there's a tension between both of them. Martha is one who, who outwardly serves, while Mary is one who inwardly worships. And it seems to be a tension between the two of them. But I want to suggest to us this evening, and I'm going to hasten on, that there is no tension between outward service and inward worship. But rather, the two of them ought to work in tandem. They ought to work together. One properly follows another. And Martha, watch this, is the one that got it wrong. We, we look at, at Mary as being lazy and sitting there where men are. She just wanting to be in Jesus' face. Get up from there and go help your sister. Now, that's what's in our hearts. That's what's in our minds because we think Mary ought to get up and go meet Martha. But Jesus says, no, we read it. He said, no, Martha. You ought to just leave that and come over here and meet Mary. Now, the tension is not between the Mary mind and the Martha mind. The tension is not uh, outward service and inward worship, but it goes or follows or one precedes the other. But because watch this, I got to make this quick point before I move. Before you can outwardly serve, you need to first inwardly worship. And, and too, far too many of us are trying to serve before we worship. Wish I had somebody help me preach right there. We're trying to put our hands on it, but we haven't put our hearts in it. Good gracious. Can, can I show you that from the Bible real quick? What will happen when you put your hands on it before you put your heart in it? In 2 Samuel chapter 6, they were on their way back to Jerusalem with the Ark of the Covenant. Give me a minute to work with my Bible readers. And, and then, first of all, they, they were carrying the cart wrong. They were bringing the cart into the city in a way that God had not instructed. God said, put some brass poles between those brass rings and carry it on your shoulder as a burden. But, but what they do, they put it on an ox cart to relieve themselves of the burden. And on the way, the oxen stumbled and popped. The cart almost fell. And then Uzzah put his hand on it and watch what God did. God killed him on the spot. Why did God kill him? Because if you ain't going to put your heart in it, don't you put your hands on it. And too many of us are hands on and hearts off. Y'all tired of me already. Okay, okay. L let me put it the way Jesus said it. Jesus said, you honor me with your lips, but your heart is far from me. Jesus said, if you put your hands to the plow and you look back, in other words, you, you don't have your heart in it. You're not fit for the kingdom of God. Listen, we honor Martha because she's the oldest. As a matter of fact, it was Martha who runs to Jesus after Lazarus dies and says almost the same thing that Peter said on the mountain of transfiguration. He, she said, you are the Christ, the son of God. Yes, I, I know who you are, but Jesus said, watch this. If you know who I am, won't you leave them daggone pots and pans and come do what Mary's doing? Because until you worship, you're not fit for service. Mm. I hope that scratch you right where you itch. <laughs> I mean, I want that to pull the scab right off of you trying to put your hands on this Christian work and you don't even sit attentively in church. You don't never open your mouth in service. If, if you could have it your way, you'd be walking around the lobby the whole time the preaching going on. Or you back here on the back hall or outside. I mean, you might be sitting down in church, church going on, but your, your mind a thousand miles away. I'm talking real now. You sitting here thinking about account balances, or better yet, you sitting and trying to figure out how you're going to undermine or supplant somebody in church so you can take charge of that ministry. And you can be in leadership because you want to do it your way. You, uh, you don't want to serve, but you want to be the president. You want to be the chairman. You want to be the secretary. You want to run it. And watch this. If you don't run it, you're going to try to tear it up so nobody else can't run it. But watch this. God ain't never really used anybody with that kind of attitude. Now, the devil has. 
But God only uses people who love to be in his presence, who love to hear his word, who, who, who love to sit at his feet, who, who are blessed when they are worshiping him. So, Penny, I'm nervous about a preacher who can't say amen when another preacher is preaching. I, I get nervous about folk who don't come to church until it's their turn to usher. Until it's your time to sing on the praise team of the choir. If you're not preaching or teaching this Sunday, I mean, you ain't really interested in participating a whole lot. That's outward service. That's just like a lot of this motivational preaching. It's pragmatic and it, it may be helpful socially, but it's self-serving at its very best. It magnifies, it glorifies itself, but when it's real, Christ is at the center of it. Martha said, Lord, tell that girl to get up from there. Get up out that men's space. Come back in here and help me. Jesus said, Martha, calm yourself. If he was in, you know, 2022. Calm yourself. Slow your roll. Stop tripping. Martha, you're getting all bent out of shape about forks being in the right place, about knives being in the right place. Y'all know it's some folk like that, right? The white towels got to be with the white towels. The table got to be set perfectly. The glasses got to be sitting a certain way in the cabinet. Well, don't come to my house. I wish I had somebody to help me. You want something to drink? Look in the cabinet in there. Get, get something out of there. Get the first glass you see. Got some Kool-Aid in there if you want it. Just make some last night. I mean, this ain't no palace. This is where we live. And if it's good enough for me, with you being a visitor, it ought to be good enough for you too. If not, I'll meet you at the mailbox. Because I'm not about putting on airs and, and being all sophisticated. It's a time for all that. Don't get me wrong. There's a time when you ought to do that. But when you're at your house, being comfortable, that's a time for hospitality. It's a time for making folk comfortable. And Jesus was comfortable at Mary and Martha's house, so Martha should have been comfortable too. Sister Matt Dougal, but, 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 but Martha was concerned, like many church folk. As my friend and brother, Pastor Ed Gordine from Faith, uh, Faith Connections Ministry, he puts it like this. She's concerned with the technicalities. Jesus said, Martha... I mean, don't, don't, don't get all historical. You, you all flustered, your blood pressure all up about a glass, a fork, a spoon, and a napkin. I mean, that, that, that's just not important. Listen to this. Mary has chosen the good part. Mary has chosen what you should have did. And I will not take it from her. Now, 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 let me tell you what that means, and I'm going to be through. See, some of y'all get a little sleepy out. I ain't mad at you. He's a little, little, we had a big time. We, we, got, we got to get through this. Watch this. Sitting down at the feet of Jesus means submission. Okay? Lord, I'm waiting to hear whatever you got to say. Watch this. Even if I don't like how it sounds, I need to hear it because it's coming from your mouth. <laughs> I'm going to go a step further. Even if I ain't even going to do it, I need to know what it is I ain't going to do. Uh-huh. Even if I know it's right and, and you got to work on me and you got to temper me, you got to cut some things away from me, you, you got to take some things off me, I, I, I know I got to get away. To, I got to get away from the kitchen. But, 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 but I got to stay here because I've got to submit myself to your word. Because I found out if I trust in the Lord with all my heart, and then I mess around and lean not to my own understanding, but in all my ways acknowledge you. Lord, you promised you will direct my path. The Bible said, blessed is the man that walks not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor stands in the way of sinners, nor sits in the seat of the scornful. But his delight is in the law of the Lord. And he shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water. That brings forth fruit in his season. His leaf shall not wither. And 
whatever he doeth shall prosper. De de delight yourself in the Lord. God, I wish I had some help. And he'll give you the desires of your heart. Whoa, 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 whoa. Sub submission. Submission. Sitting down at the feet of Jesus. It means submitting yourself to his teaching. And, and listen, listen, I'm, I'm almost through. I, I, before you can really do what it is God wants you to do, just because you got to settle on the fact that the Bible is the word of God. And watch this. Your worldview, the way you look at stuff, cannot come from the world. Your worldview, the way you look at the world, if you are a Christian, if you come under the headship of Jesus Christ, if you submitted yourself to God, your worldview has got to come from the word of God. Because Paul says, brethren, I beseech you by the mercies of God that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable act of service. And be not conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind so that you may prove what it is that that, that perfect and acceptable will of God. Listen, I'm trying to move, but, but this crowd that then came into church now, especially this under 40 crowd, a, a lot of them respect nothing and nobody. Mm -hmm. Nothing is right to them. Nothing is wrong to them. <laughs> it just depends on what everybody else is doing. Y'all ain't got to say nothing. I know, the, I know some over here, but they, they, okay, some over here too. They know I'm right. Ain't nothing wrong. Ain't nothing right. Whatever society go with, that's how we roll. Amen. Y'all ain't got to say nothing, but, but as a Christian, I come under the lordship of Jesus Christ. And watch this. Jesus tells me what my views are on gay marriage. Jesus tells me what my views are on stealing and breaking into folks' houses. Jesus tells me what my views are on loving my enemies and praying for those who despitefully misuse me. And, and blessing them that curse me. I, I don't do that kind of stuff on my own. I have to submit myself. Even when I don't want to, Brother Barry, I got to submit myself to his will and to his rule. Okay, if you're going to sit down at the feet of Jesus, you got to be submissive. Watch this, and I'm moving. Then sitting down at the feet of Jesus, it's about sacrifice. Somebody say sacrifice. You got to give up some stuff, y'all. I wish I had somebody to talk back and say, yeah, you're right, you're right. Yeah, yeah, you, you, you got to give up some stuff. Jesus said you got to deny yourself. Take up your cross and follow me. But, but not just on Saturday while you're here at Restoration of Praise. But you got to follow me daily. Yeah, yeah. When it's convenient, you got to follow me. When it's inconvenient, you got to follow me. When you feel like it, when you don't feel like it, when, when, when things are going well, when the bottom has fell out of your life, when you got a pocket full of money and when you don't know how you're going to pay your bills, when everybody's walking with you and baby, you got to walk by yourself sometimes. In the good times, in the, in the, I'm trying to move in the bad times, you got to submit and sacrifice if you're going to sit down at the feet of Jesus. Now watch this. I, I love this point. I love this. Most folk, says Tanya, watch this. Most folk want to be in the kitchen with Martha. Most folk want to be in there. Let me tell you why. Because in the kitchen, you ain't got to hear nothing. <laughs> okay, let, let, let me rewind it back. Rewind it back. In the kitchen, while Jesus is teaching, while Jesus is laying down commandments, while authority is, be, what, what is being presented, you ain't got to hear nothing. If you're in the kitchen with Martha. In other words, if you don't hear it, you don't have to take responsibility for it. Y'all know I'm talking, right? For example, for example, I'm so thankful for the musicians here. Because they get involved in the service. So that when they get through playing, they'll sit right there or they'll move to another chair and they'll get the word. Some of these musicians will play 
get up, leave, go to the store, get something to eat, because they know I'm going to be up here about 30 minutes, 45 minutes, and they know when to come back. Hallelujah. Little, little worse around here, because we're in the middle of nothing out here. You got to go on, you got 15 minutes before you get to the restaurant, unless you go to the grill. <laughs> <laughs> well, you do have Dollar General now. Praise Jesus. Get you a nab, a nab and a Pepsi. <laughs> Amen. But 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 they get excited and they get involved in church other than just playing an instrument. It's about submitting yourself to the Lordship of Jesus Christ and making a sacrifice because as good as these boys are, their talent could be used anywhere. But God wants to use it here for his glory. And I promise you, if you do it right, he'll elevate you every time. Amen. Watch this. Some folk don't come to church because they think it's ignorant and it's traditional, it's old timey. And so they want to go wherever they think a whole lot of folk who are connected congregate so they can network, so they can get the hookup. But watch this. I tried it and I know that when you sit down at the feet of Jesus, you got the master's network. Can, can I get a witness? That he'll set you up on a rock with your enemies all around you. And as a matter of fact, he'll prepare a table before you in the presence of them jokers. And then he'll make them watch you eat. And then he'll anoint your head with oil. So that when everybody else is getting laid off, your cup's still running over. The Bible said, surely, God, I wish I had a witness. Surely, goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. God, I just felt my help come through here. The Bible said, I will keep him in perfect peace whose mind is staying on me. God, help me. I will bless the Lord at all times. And his praise shall continually be in my mouth goes on to say my soul shall make her boast in the lord the humble shall hear thereof and be glad and then it says oh magnify the lord with me and let us exalt his name together help me lord help me help me i dare you look at your neighbor real fast and say neighbor when i quote that verse i'm not bragging say we're not bragging we just testifying What you mean, preacher? He woke me up this morning. What you mean, preacher? I got a new job last Tuesday. I got somewhere to sleep tonight. I got a car to drive. I got some clothes on my back. I got food in my pantry. I got some meat in my deep freezer. Baby, I'm not bragging. I'm just testifying that he opened doors for me that were closed in my face. He made my enemies become my footstools. Baby, I'm not bragging. I'm just testifying. Woo, I got to get off that. I got to get off that. But there are a few of us around here who got some bad stories from our past. Baby, we should have been dead a long time ago. Lord, I wish I had. If we'd have been caught, if we'd have been caught, we'd have been sitting in the penitentiary right now. Or we'd have been in our grave somewhere. Some of us in here have done enough drugs that we ought to be dead right now. You ought, some of y'all stole enough stuff that you ought to be locked up in jail. You got away with enough that God should have cut you off 20 years ago. But here you are sitting here looking at me this evening. Baby, we not bragging. We just testifying that it was nobody. 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 But the Lord. Hey, God. Ah, Lord, help me finish this. Ah, it was nobody but Jesus. One last thing. Y'all, please sit down. Please sit down. Please sit down. You just, I just got real nervous when y'all jumped up. One, 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 one last thing. Sister, I'm going to get you out. One last thing. Here we go. You ready? Here it is. It's submission. It's sacrifice. You're going to like this one. Then it's service. Okay? Bible said, I'm going to work while it's day. Because the night is coming, we can't nobody work. That's my Jonathan Pitt conversion, where no man can work. I 
I, I'm ready to serve God now because I've submitted myself under his lordship. Y'all still with me? I made some sacrifices that have brought me to where I am now. Because when I look back over my life, and Sister Fanetta, I see what could have happened to me. God Almighty. I'm trying, I'm, I'm thug tears. If y'all see some tears, I'm thug tears. I ain't. Get a little emotional. When I think about where I could have been, when I think about everything that could have happened, and if justice had its way, everything that should have happened. Sister, I realize God been good to me. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I, I said God's been good to me. I, I, I said God's been good to me. So, 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 so I'm ready to serve God now. I'm ready to give God my best hallelujah. Um, and I want to give it to him because of what he did not allow to happen to me. God, I wish I had two more witnesses right there. Listen, listen. Last point. Some of us serve God. I said that a while ago, didn't I? I'm sorry. Some of us serve God because of what he does. Or because of what happens in our lives. Or because of what we have in our bank account. Or because of the stuff we got hanging in our closets. Or because of what we drive or where we live or who we know. We serve God because of. But I need us to move this evening from because of to in spite of. In other words, in spite of my heart being broken, I'm still going to stay with God. In spite of the fact that I got to still take this medication for this sickness, I'm going to still raise my hand in the sanctuary. In spite of the fact that my child is still on drugs, I got to serve God anyway. In spite of the fact that I don't know how my job situation going to turn out, I'm still going to shout hallelujah anyhow. Because God is good in spite of what's going on in my life. Now, 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 now watch this. You ain't got to praise him. Just get out of my way. Huh? You ain't got to lift your hand. Just get out of my range. Give me a few feet. Give me some space. Because I've got some in spite of praise. In spite of the lies they told on me. Can I be real? In spite of the lies I told. I wish I had a witness in this place. In spite of the foolishness I could have been caught in. In spite of the sins I committed. Since I've been saved. God is still good to me. God is still merciful towards me. God is still opening doors for me. God is still working on me. God is still making a way out of no way. So, baby, I'm going to praise him in spite of what I don't have. I'm going to just bless the Lord because of what I do have. I do have a reasonable portion of my health and strength. I do have somewhere to sleep tonight. I do have another pair of clothes to put on. I do have some friends and family. Baby, God gave me all that in spite of everything that I don't have. I'm still going to praise God. I got my salvation. Hallelujah. I got my name written in the Lamb Book of Life. I do have a, a, a reservation in my hand that if God were to come back for me today, I got my ticket punched. And the great thing is I got my joy. Sister Kid, I, I got my joy. I got my peace. And watch this. This joy that I have, didn't none of y'all give it to me. And whether y'all show up, whether y'all cuss me out, whether y'all turn and walk away, this joy I have, since y'all didn't give it to me, baby, y'all can't take it away. I got, in spite of praise, in spite of the tears I had to cry, in spite of the loneliness in the midnight hour, in spite of the trouble on every side, in spite of everywhere you turn, the Bible said we're troubled, but not distressed. We're forsaken, but we're not destroyed. We're knocked down, but we're not knocked out. Because the Lord will show up 
I said he will show up just when you need him the most. And when the Lord comes to your rescue, don't come in here and act like you made it all by yourself. Don't you come in here and act like you did it all by yourself. You are to come to the house of prayer. You are to be waving your hand. You are to be stomping your feet. You are to tell God, thank you for everything. For everything that you've done for me. Thank you, God, for where you brought me from. Thank you, God, that one Friday on the old rugged cross, he died. Didn't he die? Didn't he die? I know he died. But thank God that early, early, one Sunday morning, Barry, he got up out the grave. Hey, and he got up with all power in his hand. If the Lord has opened doors for you, I'm trying to quit. If the Lord has been good to you, you ought to praise him right now in spite of hallelujah if the Lord in spite of how I'm feeling in spite of what I'm going through in spite of what it looked like in spite of what the doctor report say I still got my joy. Tell somebody, and that's the good part. Come on and bless his name. I'm finished. I'm finished. I'm finished. I got to preach tomorrow. I forgot. Woo! Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I still got my joy. Lord, I got to preach tomorrow. I want to preach some more now. Y'all come back tomorrow. Come, 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 to, come to all nations tomorrow. Let's have some more church tomorrow afternoon. If you can't make it down there, watch on the live stream. Hallelujah. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Hallelujah. 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 In spite of, still got it. Tell somebody, I still got it. Hallelujah. Yes, Lord. Hallelujah. Mary. Hallelujah. Mary chose the good part. Listen, any time you decide to sit down at the feet of Jesus, you choose the good part. I promise you, your life changes when you sit down at the feet of Jesus. I hear some of you, I'm going to just lay down at his feet. Hallelujah. I'm going to just lay down. I'm going to get all that I can don't, don't, don't worry about these screens bro Willie don't, don't even worry about these screens we good God, God is speaking greater hallelujah listen listen you ain't got to preach like Peter you ain't got to pray like Paul but I promise you once you sit at the feet of Jesus and you learn from him you soak it in you can share the love of Jesus you can tell folk that he died for all of us. And listen, in spite of what I don't have, I'm, I'm trying to get off that. I've learned to praise God for a little bit of stuff that he did give me. <laughs> Hallelujah. I, I ain't got the biggest house, but I got a house. I may not have the finest ride in the parking lot. But praise be to God, it got me from Hope Mills and I pray it take me back. <laughs> Hallelujah. I want to be like Mary. Sister, I want to be like Mary. Lex, I, I, I want to sit where Mary's sitting. I mean, y'all yeah, can have all that work in the kitchen. Y'all can have all that. Y'all can have all that fixing and dressing and making sure that the tablecloth is even on every side. Y'all can have all that. You can have all that fussing and preparing and because watch this, some folk ain't going to be satisfied no way. Can, can we just be real? I, I was a real country when I said that. They ain't going to be satisfied no way. I don't care what you put in front of them. I don't care how you bless them. 
I, I, I don't care how you prepare for them. I don't care how much you give. I don't care how much you serve, how much you go out your way. Some folk still would never be pleased. So I'm, I'm just going over and see where Mary sit at the feet of Jesus. Because that's always the good part. And, and Jesus said, because she chose it, I'm trying to move. Jesus said, I'm not going to take it from her. Now, now, you can choose to stay in the kitchen all day long if you want to. But don't get married with Mary because she don't want to do what you're doing. That's your gift. That's your thing. That's your talent. You, you keep doing that. But if you don't want to do what Mary's doing, don't stop Mary from doing it. She chose this. You chose that. I ain't going to make her get up and help you and, and, and leave me. What kind of sense does that make? <laughs> to get up from listening to Jesus to go make cornbread. To, to leave the gospel to go make some dressing. I mean, that's got to be done, but that can wait. The good part is sitting down at the feet of Jesus. Now, now, don't get me wrong. I ain't telling you not to go to your house and don't clean up and don't make up your bed and <laughs> don't take a bath. I ain't, I ain't saying that. And all that getting, let's get some understanding. I ain't saying that. All I'm saying is what was said in Matthew 6 and 33. That if you seek ye first the kingdom of God, all these other things shall be added unto you. So if you seek God first, everything else that you're going after is going to seek after you. Did, did y'all hear what I said? If you seek, if you run after God with everything that you have, the very thing that you long for will come looking for you. I'm a witness. I'm working in a field right now that had nothing to do with my college degree where I make about two and a half times more than what I should be making with my degree. I thank God. I'm not bragging. Yeah, yeah, I'm testifying. But what I'm saying, I ain't go looking for the job. The job came and found me. I, I, I didn't go looking for the promotion. The promotion came and found me. Yeah. <laughs> there are so many things that go on in, in, in my life. And my father and I, we talk about it. When something good happened to pop, first he talked to Jesus. Then he called his son. <laughs> I get a call. He'll, he'll thank Jesus first. Boy, let me tell you what just happened to me. I, you, you got a minute. That minute turns into seven. That's just how we do. And I find that I, I, I got to go. I got I to go in this doctor's office. I got to go. But blessings run him down because he seeks after the face of Jesus. And I, I, I don't think he'll be embarrassed or be upset with me for me to say he hasn't always ran after Jesus the way he does now. Singing, playing, everywhere. I've never seen him more committed to Christ now out of all my years of living. But I've never seen him more blessed as he is now. Do y'all see the correlation? I'm looking at some, I've never seen you as blessed as you are right now. I ain't never seen you riding as nice as you riding now. I'm talking, talking to my cousin. She know I'm telling the truth. Amen. But when you see, I ain't saying you got to be perfect. You ain't got to be perfect. But you're trying to be perfected. Don't pity paddle, don't play with it. Because I promise you, you play with sin, it's going to bite you. Amen. And it's hard to come out that pond once you fall in it. Amen. Let me move. Every head bowed, eyes closed. Y'all ready to go home.